here and today in this video I wanted to go over the easiest way to start drop shipping in 2019. Some of you guys may have already heard me mention before how uh, I personally am big on you know starting off using the drop ship model and then later on transitioning on to building a brand around products that you get results with. Now this video in particular it's going to focus on the the beginning point right getting started whether you know you're looking to get started or you're you know you're in the middle of getting started i guarantee you're going to get value from this video and so make sure you guys stay to the end because i'm going to be covering the three main components to the e-commerce ecosystem okay so right here i put together this, the few different points that i wanted to go over and if you see me looking away i'm just going over here my computer just following along exactly what i actually outlined for you guys there are some key things that I wanted to go over specifically that I think will be super beneficial for you guys to learn about um, in this video. So when first getting started in e-commerce, there's basically three main com or three core components to an e-commerce ecosystem. The way that e-commerce works, some people think that they're going to come in and if they just put a, together a random Shopify store with some random products and run some random Facebook ads, they're just going to magically get results. I can be the first one to tell you, if you haven't already heard, it's not going to be that easy coming in 2019. I do think that you have to have a much better understanding of how the process of buying online works and how the e-commerce ecosystem works. The three core components of an e-commerce ecosystem is broken down between your store, products, and marketing. Those are the three things that you have to have down when first getting started if you want to actually get real results. We're going to kind of go over these three in particular and kind of go through some key points in between them. I typically start off and recommend for anyone that's just getting started, after you decide whether you want to go niche or general, you want to obviously then transition on to potentially looking at some products, but the main focus initially before you launch anything should be on the store. Now, there's some key things, right? If you don't know about what goes into having an optimized website or optimized store, don't worry, it's not a problem. You can actually you know, reverse engineer after success, after people that have already done super well with their stores or you know, their brands and learn from them. In e-commerce specifically though, design is everything. Your customers aren't able to physically be in your store, so you have to make sure your online store can do all the selling for you. And so when you're creating your store, you have to think about that. If you're not able to sell your customers on your products, your store has to be able to do it for you. And there's some key things you need to have in your store in order to be able to have your store do the selling for you, do the heavy lifting. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get the results you're looking for. If you have no idea of what kind of layout your store should have, I recommend you take a step back and you start researching three to four stores that are uh, top performing stores and whatever niche you're planning on selling in or stores that are around what specific products you're planning on testing out in the market. And if you don't know how to research like any top stores or any best performing like websites, I, I'll do a quick walkthrough of showing you guys how you can do it and a great tool you guys can use uh, absolutely free also. I'm starting off, I don't think you should just again put together a store that you think, this is a mistake that a lot of people do. They go ahead and put together a store that they think looks good and they think will help convert people. In reality, that's a big risk you're taking by doing that because the market knows what it wants. So if you're putting together a store based on what you want, you may not be in the right direction. You want to focus on figuring out what the market wants and what they're interested in and building your store around that. Now, it's natural to want your store to be a picture-perfect reflection of your brand, your products, and your vision. Obviously, it's your business, and after all, you know, for many of us e-commerce entrepreneurs, usually that first storefront is like your baby, right? The only storefront you have. So it's completely normal to want it to be like tip top perfect and have everything in place before you launch. But that's like, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes people can try to be too perfect. And if you try to be too perfect, then, it, you know, it could take you a little bit longer to launch. Or, and if you try to be too perfect, maybe you don't end up launching until everything is done. But once you're done, you, you set up your store around uh, products or a niche that maybe the market isn't even interested in. So I never recommend to try to be too perfect. I recommend that you actually start building as soon as you can. As soon as you start researching, you find some of these stores that you can model after. Start modeling after these stores, right? You want to make sure that you spend your time building as soon as you have enough info and enough uh, resources to kind of build from. Because you want to start testing as soon as you can. I, I learned this theory from a few mentors. One of my main mentors actually, um, and it's testing with a minimal viable product. You want to figure out if the market is going to, how the market is going to react to your store with a minimal viable product, a minimal viable store, right? 
And then from there, you can always adjust. Now, I'm not minimal Bible store. I'm not saying just like a random theme with some random pictures and, you know, like not even optimized at all. This means at least a store that you've went through and spent some time on, but you're not spending like two months on, right? So that's what I wanted to kind of make sure I got across. As you're looking to bring your site to life and launch it, you want to keep in mind, you can always make changes, right? It's not like your store, like once it's set up, it has to stay like that. You can always make changes later on. The main point that I want to have you guys understand is when you're going through and you're setting up your store, have enough done to it where you can launch and obviously customers still respond well to it, but you're not spending all your time trying to make your store be look, look like Amazon, for example, off day one. Because if you do that, and again, you're in the wrong niche, wrong niche, and you're going after the wrong products, that can end up delaying you know, the results you're looking to get. So that's as far as the store goes. Now, products. Products is one of the biggest things when it comes to you know, drop shipping or e-commerce overall. And people do seem to make uh, a lot of the same mistakes when it comes to actually finding what products to sell. And I wanted to kind of clarify on one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make. And this is going after products or choosing products to test or sell that they are interested in. Now, I actually can attest, I personally did this mistake myself. Like I, you know, I, I'm the first one to admit when I first got started into e-commerce, I decided that it would be a good idea because I'm into fitness and working out why not go ahead and you know choose products around the fitness space right and then market to people that are also interested in fitness so i thought because i like these products other people would too and i learned the hard way that that's exactly how it does not work because the market will always tell you what it's interested in not vice versa right you can't tell the market what they want they're going to tell you what they're interested in starting off you want to make sure you don't do the, the same mistake you want to make sure you're not going out there and just randomly picking these products or you know you're deciding what you're going to sell i am a huge fan of and a big believer that you should choose what products you're going to sell and test based on data and research that's how i do things that's how i train the team to do things and so that's something that i recommend for you guys as well because that's how i've gotten my results i haven't gotten results from I have a, a joke that I say to one of my friends by winging my product research, right? Just like guessing what products I'm going to choose. I've gotten results by putting in the work and researching products and then finding winners through that process. So just to be transparent with you guys, I wanted to cover that, but I kind of already did. The market does not care what products you're interested in. The market cares about what products they are interested in. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Now, what I've seen in my time in that, I, that I've been in the e-commerce space is that there's three main categories of products that have a history of selling well. And the way I got these three categories is I just took a step back and I spent some time researching some of the best performing products in the last few years and then some of the best performing products right now up to date. The first category of products that have sold really well that I've seen is problem solving products. An example of a problem solving product is actually some of you guys may have seen it. There was this ad going around for these posture corrector devices. You like put them on. And they basically help you with your posture, right? Keep your posture nice and straight, keep your chest out, your shoulders back. That product right there did extremely well, right? If you actually look on AliExpress, and if we actually check on here, which actually we can do really fast. If we go on AliExpress, right? I actually had it pulled up because I wanted to show you guys. Right here, I looked up the posture corrector. I just did it for the sake of time. I already had it looked up. So if you look for the posture corrector, there's multiple suppliers that have 10,000 plus orders. This supplier has 12,000. This supplier has 25,000. This one has 31,000. This supplier has 32,000. And it, and it keeps going, right? Some of these have less. Now, this product did extremely well. And there was numerous people promoting this same product. One of the reasons why that product did really well is because it solved a huge problem, right? The problem of people not being able to have their posture straight, right? People hate slouching over or not having their back straight. And so because of that, it did extremely well. Another example, another category of products that I've seen do really well is passionate products, products that are based on a specific passion. I've seen those do also super well. Uh, a perfect example of this is um, just recently, there was a, a rose teddy bear that got a lot of traction, right, for Valentine's Day. I've seen numerous, pro numerous people build stores around these specific products and also build a brand around these specific products. In this video, we won't be talking too much about building a brand and kind of how you do that. But uh, if you check below this video, me and my business partner put together a free training showing you guys how you can actually get started using the drop shipping model like we're going over now and then how to transition onto building a brand around the products that you actually get results with. 
And that's what we kind of go over in the training. But I actually saw people that were doing super well drop shipping this product. And then I also saw people that built brands around this product and they both were doing extremely well. I've seen like these wolf mugs that did extremely well. I've seen cat t-shirts do really well. 3D cat printed socks. Like the, there's a ton of different passion products. I just wanted to kind of choose that one because it was the most recent one. And I wanted to go, give you guys an insight because some of you guys may have seen it yourselves. The last category of products that I have seen do really well is perishable products. Perishable meaning that you need more than one of the product. I can give you guys a few examples. One of the main examples is, for example, some of you guys may have seen there were these push-up bras, these sticky push-up bras, and they, that product actually fell into two categories. It solved the problem because it helped women keep like their, their breast in place. It was perishable because you couldn't use it multiple times. Like You could probably use like two or three times, but you needed more than one of the products. So typically, products that you need more than one of fall into that perishable category and they're products that do really well because customers need to buy more than one. So typically you can have higher average order values, meaning that you have customers that buy more than one of the product right away. And you also have customers that come back to buy more of the product because they just need more of it. So that was one. Um, you also have like the charcoal toothpaste. That was a product that also solved the problem, solved the problem of uh, having yellow teeth, but also, you know, once you use it, it's not like your teeth just stay that white or you get the best results. Ideally, the more you use it, the better results you get. So that's also a product that was a perishable product because once you use the toothpaste, toothpaste that you have from the tub, you then go and you have to buy more so you can maintain and get even better results. Again, I, these are the three main categories that I've seen do really well as far as like product goes. And I would recommend if you guys are just getting started to spend some time looking through different niches, but looking for these kinds of products, not just random products that don't really have, you know, like don't really solve any problems or there's no passion around or aren't perishable. Like these three categories are what I what has worked for me, like looking for products between these three categories. And so I do think that if you guys chose pretty much any niche and you focus around finding these kinds of products, you'd get results with some of these products as well. Now, the last part or component of the e-commerce ecosystem in order to get results is your marketing. Now, obviously, you know, you can have a good store, you can have great products, but if you don't know how to get those products in front of the right people, the right way, well, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. And so one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people do is majority of people just jump into Facebook ads without taking the time to learn or research the audience they're marketing to. This is a huge mistake because if you don't know how to market to your ideal audience and your ideal customer, well, you're going to limit the possible results that you can actually get. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. I've seen this happen over and over and over again. And one of the things that I'm huge on, whether it be with clients or students that I work with, is having you spend a good amount of time researching before you actually launch any kind of advertising campaigns. Because researching a majority should take up a majority of your time the actual process of launching campaigns actually doesn't take that long. You can launch a campaign in three to five minutes. But obviously, if, you not, if you're not targeting the right people, if you're not running the right kind of ads, you're not going to get the best possible results. So I believe that you should spend a majority of your time researching all possible interests you can use on Facebook to place your ads in front of your ideal customer. Um, for those of you guys that don't know what interests are, it's basically going, you know, find, figuring out what websites, what blogs, what magazines your ideal customer is interested in that you can use to target on Facebook. Then from there, I believe that you should spend some time researching Facebook ads for your niche or product or products that have performed well in the past and Facebook ads that are currently performing well. Uh, the reason why I think you should research top performing Facebook ads is because you can learn a lot from them, right? You can learn a lot from the kind of video they used to you know, have a Facebook ad that performed well. Uh, what kind of copy did they use? What kind of call to action? All these things you can learn from by researching ads that have performed well in the past and ads that are currently performing well as we speak. And to do that, it's actually super simple. If you go on Facebook and you utilize the Facebook search bar, you can actually type in either your niche or your specific products and you can search all ads that have, have been ran for that specific product. By year, you can filter out by years, if it's previously or even up to date this year, and you can see all ads that are running and see the kind of results they have, right? Ideally, you wanna look for ads that have good engagement and high video views because typically those are the ads that perform well. Once you have done the research, you wanna make a list of the interests you have researched, again, like blogs, magazines, and websites. And then you also wanna make a list of top performing Facebook ads you researched. 
And what I like to do is, first off, if you make both of these lists, if you ever have to launch any other products, you always you have a base to kind of go by, right? You have all these different interests that you can use to actually potentially target to see if you can get results with these different audiences, right? And if you have a list of top performing Facebook ads, well, you have an idea of how you can prepare your Facebook ads, right? What kind of video you should use, what kind of copy you should use, what kind of call to action, all these things. But if you don't do the research and you're just winging it, you know, you're not actually following or modeling after success. Well, you know, your chances of getting results aren't going to be as high. What I would do is after I would re I do that research, I would spend my time using that data to actually then start making my own Facebook ads and actually running Facebook ads. And that's what I would recommend for those of you guys that are just getting started. Like if I was literally today getting started, I, this is, these are the exact same things I would do. Now we obviously can get a lot more granular and specific on how to actually do these things. I'm probably gonna make have to make specific videos on those specific topics or I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you guys. You guys let me know what you wanna know more about. This is a great outline to kind of get started with. Now, the other thing I wanted to leave that I wanted to include in this video before we wrap up is to, don't, to not be afraid to try out other traffic sources. So something that I've seen across this space and you know, between other gurus is that not many people talk about using other traffic sources like Google ads, for example, to be completely transparent with you guys right now with a combination of Facebook and Google, we're actually getting incredible results. Like we're getting great results from the Google ads that we're running. And it, at times or actually times we're getting lower costs per customers with Google ads than we are on Facebook. So I'm going to be making more content around Google ads as well, because I do think it's super valuable to your business. Anyone that's in the e-commerce space, if you're not running any Google ads, you're only focusing on Facebook, you're going to be missing out because what actually works really well is a combination of running both Facebook ads and Google ads. Now, again, that's a lot more advanced. For those of you guys that are more advanced, you can check out the free training that me and my business partner put together. That's where we kind of go over, you know, everything that from building the store, products, drop shipping them, turning into a brand, marketing, and how to really do all that in detail. So if, again, if you wanna check more about that, if you wanna learn more about that, you can check out the free training down below. I wanted to make sure I included that because again, when I check on YouTube, for example, or when I see other people talking about e-commerce, I don't see many people talking about Google ads. So uh, I wanna make sure I don't do you guys a disservice and I'm actually gonna make uh, more content around using other platforms. I've also, we've tried out like Bing ads, we've tried out uh, Pinterest ads. And so I haven't gotten as good results from those just yet, but I also haven't spent enough time on them. But for example, between Facebook and Google, I spend a majority of my time advertising like my current products and I'm getting great results. So uh, I feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't put more trainings around uh, using different traffic sources. So I'll make sure to do so. But that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you guys got any value from this video, if you picked up anything, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like. Um, leave me a comment down below. Let me know any questions you guys have about uh, any of the topics or any of the points that we just went over. I'll make sure to get back to you guys. I'll be responding to all comments. And if you haven't already, make sure you join the family, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.